Re-entry heat is wicked. I've survived it three times. This candid insight comes from Chris Hadfield, a Canadian retired astronaut who has flown two space shuttle missions. While Elon Musk may not have experienced the thrill of orbiting Earth himself, he fully grasps the dangers posed by extreme re-entry temperatures. Rather than succumbing to fear, Musk is fueled by a relentless determination to create a fully reusable orbital heat shield capable of overcoming one of spaceflight's greatest challenges. As SpaceX embarked on Flight 7, excitement built around testing a groundbreaking new heat shield design, meticulously developed in response to past failures. However, this anticipation quickly went down when SpaceX faced a setback during Flight 7 that will likely impact the entire heat shield program moving forward. Join us as we dive deep into today's episode to uncover all the details. Anyway, our next goal is 100,000 and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. With the goal of a fully reusable Starship rocket, SpaceX must overcome the toughest problem, building a reusable orbital heat shield. So why call it the toughest problem? As Elon said, Nobody has ever made a reusable orbital heat shield. While we have seen a type of heat shield on NASA's space shuttle, it is not actually reusable. He pointed out that the shuttle's heat shield required extensive refurbishment, taking a long time and involving a large team, which he argued did not meet a reasonable definition of reusability. Musk stated, the shuttle's heat shield required over six months of refurbishment by a large team, so was not reusable by any reasonable definition of the word. In contrast, Musk aims for SpaceX's Starship to achieve a fully and immediately reusable heat shield, which he describes as the biggest technology challenge remaining for Starship. This ambition stems from SpaceX's commitment to rapid reusability across all components of their spacecraft, including the heat shield, which traditionally consists of thousands of small, interlocking tiles that must withstand extreme temperatures during re-entry. To reach its objective, the heat shield has become a focal point in Starship testing since Flight 5, particularly with the introduction of six aluminum-coated tiles. However, this was likely the first test of this new material, which ultimately failed to withstand the extreme re-entry conditions and melted. SpaceX subsequently made enhancements to this design and conducted ground tests that simulated Martian atmospheric conditions. Based on the data collected, SpaceX felt confident to proceed with Flight 7, where they planned to install a metal heat shield on Ship 33. This version features an innovative liquid film cooling system designed to prevent the heat shield from melting during re-entry, addressing the issues faced in Flight 5. At that moment, there was significant anticipation surrounding Flight 7 to assess the performance of the newly upgraded metal heat shield. Unfortunately, an unexpected rapid unscheduled disassembly, RUD, of Ship 33 occurred much earlier than expected, disappointing many observers. Despite the explosion of Ship 33, Elon Musk noted that it still achieved a quarter of its intended success. New ship forward flaps, higher thrust engines, and tile adherence on ascent were tested. However, improved heat shield performance was the only major thing that wasn't tested along with the PEZ payload dispenser. He later said those missing tasks would likely be solved by next month's launch. On the other hand, it is undeniable that the explosion of Ship 33 has created considerable challenges for SpaceX. Following the incident, the FAA required SpaceX to conduct a mishap investigation, which is expected to delay the next Starship mission. Elon Musk has tentatively targeted February for Flight 8. However, this timeline is uncertain due to the ongoing investigation. In the following weeks, SpaceX must complete several critical tasks, including verifying debris locations with affected regions, determining the root cause of the incident, and implementing corrective actions. Additionally, the FAA established a debris response area, activated only when debris lands outside designated hazard zones. 
SpaceX asserts that all debris would have re-entered the designated hazard area set up prior to launch in the Atlantic Ocean. Although the company asserted that Starship maintained its intended trajectory, it also acknowledged some uncertainty in its updates. Consequently, both the FAA and local authorities grounded and rerouted flights in the vicinity due to the debris, with some flights needing to change their landing plans because of low fuel. Reports indicate that debris was found along the coasts of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, as well as on the shores of the Turks and Caicos Islands. The government of the Turks and Caicos Islands, a British overseas territory, stated that while there were no injuries reported, there was minor property damage. They have advised locals not to touch or handle the debris and to inform local authorities instead. However, spacecraft debris, including parts from failed starships in Texas, often ends up on online marketplaces for sale. Recently, images of Flight 7 heat shield debris surfaced online, showing over 100 pieces of various sizes and shapes laid out on a long table, including at least two intact tiles. Furthermore, reports have emerged of metallic debris from Starship S-33 being discovered on the islands, with locals actively searching for fragments. Given this context, it is probable that the visible debris constitutes only a fraction of the total amount. The pieces that have washed ashore are just a small subset, while many others likely remain adrift in the ocean, unaccounted for. Local authorities have started to tackle the situation. In a public statement, Delini Daniel Selvaratnam, the governor of the Turks and Caicos Islands, voiced her concerns. Like many across the Turks and Caicos Islands, I share the concern caused by the outfall of debris and bright colors in the sky yesterday evening. Despite these challenges, there is positive news. No injuries have been reported. The FAA stated on its website, there are no reports of public injury, and the FAA is working with SpaceX and appropriate authorities to confirm reports of public property damage on Turks and Caicos. Similarly, the National Security Secretariat of the Turks and Caicos government reported, there are no reported injuries and reports of only minimal damage to property at this time. Hopefully, everything will be fine. Elon Musk mentioned the metallic heat shield for the first time in late 2018 and early 2019. It was a kind of ultra-reusable heat shield for Starship. Build it out of steel and use water, or liquid methane, to wick re-entry heat away. You just need, essentially, a stainless steel sandwich. You flow either fuel or water in between the sandwich layer and then you have very tiny perforations on the outside, and you essentially bleed water, or fuel, through them to cool the windward side of the rocket. It's safe to say a stainless steel sandwich on half of Starship offers many huge benefits. It could significantly streamline the requirements for Starship's advanced heat shield. Additionally, utilizing a stainless steel sandwich structure on part of the spacecraft provides another major advantage. It allows the vehicle to benefit from the mass ratio advantages of stainless steel balloon tanks. These are metal tanks that are so thin they collapse without internal pressure, while still maintaining structural strength even when not pressurized. Ultimately, Musk may be correct in his assertion that a stainless steel Starship could be more mass efficient or lighter than one constructed from high-tech carbon composites, a notion he accurately describes as counterintuitive. Accompanied with the stainless steel sandwich, we also have the transpiration cooling. It is an active cooling method that protects spacecraft from extreme thermal loads during re-entry. This technique involves expelling gas or liquid through the surface of the heat shield, creating a cooling layer that absorbs heat before it can damage the structure. Traditional heat shields often rely on ablative materials that burn away during re-entry, which limits their reusability and increases mission costs. Current research and developments regarding the technique could include Trace Experiment The Transpiration Cooling Experiment, a.k.a. Trace aims to test this technology in real conditions. 
It involves a free-flying unit designed to measure heat dissipation during atmospheric re-entry at speeds up to Mach 3.2. The experiment is significant as it represents one of the first in-flight tests of transpiration cooling, potentially paving the way for more efficient and reusable thermal protection systems. The development of transpiration cooled systems has included advanced materials like titanium alloys and carbon composites, which are being assessed for their effectiveness under hypersonic conditions. Research indicates that these materials can be optimized for different flight scenarios, enhancing their performance during re-entry. While promising, the implementation of transpiration cooling faces challenges such as ensuring the pores do not clog and maintaining effective coolant flow under extreme conditions. Back to Flight 7, in addition to the new design of the metallic heat shield, Ship 33 also had tiles that were purposely removed from the stress test vulnerable area. More importantly, this happened across the entire vehicle. The idea of missing tiles on the spacecraft is not new. It was previously seen during Flight 6 when the heat shields of S-31 were not completely installed. This new heat shield configuration represents a significant change as SpaceX planned to use it to evaluate various secondary thermal protection materials. According to SpaceX, several thermal protection experiments and operational changes will test the limits of Starship's capabilities and generate flight data to inform plans for ship catch and reuse. Notably, entire sections of heat shield tiles were deliberately omitted on both sides of the ship in critical areas being examined for future catch-enabling hardware. In Flight 6, the areas lacking tiles are located around the forward flap, with images showing missing heat shield sections near where the body connects to the flap. This alteration could facilitate the addition of new catch hardware, potentially acting as a primary or secondary support point during the catching process. Imagine a foldable system that can flexibly open and close, enhancing integration with the chopsticks and leading to a more efficient and secure catching maneuver. Flight 7 witnessed something that SpaceX couldn't do in Flight 6, catching the Super Heavy booster by Mechazilla arm with ease. The reason for the issue in Flight 6 is that automated health checks of critical hardware on the launch and catch tower triggered an abort of the catch attempt. To prepare for Flight 7, SpaceX resolved critical hardware issues on the launch and catch tower. And finally, they repeated the unprecedented feat for the second time. As expected, SpaceX aimed for a soft landing of Ship 33 in the Indian Ocean. However, the upper stage of the spacecraft disintegrated during flight over the Dominican Republic. Specifically, SpaceX lost contact with the ship about a minute and a half after it was caught by the tower likely due to an anomaly that occurred much earlier than the planned flight trajectory of approximately 66 minutes. All six Raptor engines ignited during the ascent phase. The initial reason for this issue is caused by an oxygen-slash-fuel leak in the area above the ship's engine firewall. This leak was significant enough to create pressure that exceeded the capacity of the venting system. Preliminary indication is that we had an oxygen slash fuel leak in the cavity above the ship engine firewall that was large enough to build pressure in excess of the vent capacity, Elon Musk said.